so we'll go ahead and get started. I'll just start off with um, the remote meeting procedures while people kind of get settled in um, in keeping with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations. This meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by committee members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards quorum. The meeting will broadcast live and be recorded on ECAT to um, use Zoom, um, you'll need to use the link on the agenda and download the Zoom application while conducting meetings remotely. We'll endeavor to keep meeting operations as close to our standard procedures as possible. However, use of this platform will necess necessitate some additional meeting protocols. So while um, committee members and will be on video and audio, public participants will join a webinar as attendees, meaning they're muted with no vid video feed. Um, during the public portion of the meeting, members of the public can be recognized by using their raised hand function um, or make a request with the Q&A function. And then when starting testimony, please state your name and address for the record. Um, as in any public meeting, indecent behavior will not be tolerated. And anyone who abuses use of the meeting platform will be terminated from the meeting. Business will be handled at the times indicated on the agenda and business not included in the allotted time will be tabled to the end of the meeting to allow for timely logins and remote attendance. Um, while all business indicated on the agenda has been completed, the members will vote to adjourn the meeting, signaling the end of the meeting and the termination of the ECAT. Our, all participants will be disconnected from the webinar at that time. And I think we are good. So let me just see if anybody else has joined real quick. No, I think we have everybody. Thank you all for joining. So Kathy and Michelle have conflicts, so they will not be able to join us today. So let's go ahead and get started. To ensure we have quorum, can um, we just kind of go around and make sure we have everyone here? Craig Barger. Ms. Bornstein. Beth Devonshire. Oh, Karen, I jumped you. Oh, Karen Chan. It's okay. Amy Gershman here. And Kristen Hay here. Okay. Cheryl Sklar. All right, thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and get the meeting started. It is January 10th at 6.36 p.m. Um, so anybody have any feedback from the minutes that Kelly sent over to us? Second page meeting, Karen and Beth met with Kristen Kennedy and Jeff. Is is it Page or is it the, the new Jeff uh, Page? Is is I don't know. That's not the assistant director then. Is, is that um Kelly, is that the assistant director or is that somebody different? Oh, hi. Sorry, I was trying to figure out how to talk. Um so Jeff Page is the program um, coordinator. Um, Joe Pitty is the director. Oh, okay. So, okay. Page so it is, is Page. Is correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other notes for the meeting minutes? Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Barger. Second, Gershman. Can we go ahead and vote on that? Marjorie, Me. yes. Bornstein, yes. Chan, yes. Devonshire, yes. Gershman, yes. Hey, yes. Sklar, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, so um, events. So we wanted to touch base on two events today. One is the spring art event that we've been kind of talking about. And um, I think maybe Cheryl, you might have a little bit of an update on this one. Um, I don't have much of an update yet. I just, um, I reached out to Rob Delalu, who is the new HR director and DEI person for Southeastern Folk. Um, I haven't heard back from him. Um, doesn't mean that I won't. I probably will end up hearing from him tonight. Um, I, Kelly Lamb and Denise from RMK are both interested in finding out what we would like to do to collaborate. And I did reach out to Kelly Kavanaugh and TJ um, Flanagan over at um, Oliver Ames. So um, I could share with you all later on the email that I sent everybody, if you want me to, um, just waiting to hear back from everybody. Who's the art director for Easton? 
Kristen Shea is the um, the art teacher at the high school. But she did middle school stuff too. It, so I'm I'm just wondering if she's involved in in some way. I, sure I could easily really reach out to her. Yeah. Um, it's always good to have another art teacher um, working on it. And um, I and I might. I mean, I know I'm Foxborough, but I do have students that live in Easton. And um, one of the things I'm working on with my um, seventh and eighth graders right now are mural projects. So um, I'm happy to reach out to Kristen Shea as well. I can forward her an email um, this evening. Well, I can um, I can reach out to to Kristen because I I had actually already reached out to her um, in regards to potentially trying to utilize that space. But I think um, when I had thought about it, it was probably closer to around maybe trying to kick it off at the end of last year. And I think she had said that they had multiple projects going on at the time for the school and they had already kind of planned out several activities. So maybe I can circle back with her now knowing that we're looking more like a, uh, a spring event and see if there's any interest in participation for that. Right. So, um, as we, I, I'm sorry, Karen, I can see a, a, um, like an overlap with some of the students that Kristen works with at the high school and some of the students on the social justice, um, the social justice club and the, um, the uh, young, because a lot of the young people there also work um, with RMK. So there's probably a lot of overlap and, and similar um, young people that do that. So I think it'd be great if we can get um, also the VOC on board too, because there's a lot of people in Easton, that, uh, students in Easton that attend. So I think we could probably pull that all together. Yeah, I think so too. So I know we had talked about maybe forming a subcommittee for this yeah. and obviously we then ran into holiday time frame, and things got a little bit crazy, but Cheryl, are you good to kind of lead that subcommittee and maybe start to get some things um, yeah get some meetings coordinated with folks and, and well, that, yeah that was definitely the, the plan is to get the interest and then so Kelly and Denise are definitely interested in the meeting and I'm sure a rep somewhere within the OA walls will be and it's great if we can um, include the middle school um, I think that 12 years old is not too young to start something like this and have an understanding of what we're doing there's also um, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if we can reach out to the Arts Collaborative over um, in the center. There's um, over, is it the, by Shoveltown? Um, yeah, off Main Street. That's right. So that might be also an outlet too that I'll reach out to. They might actually have like the supplies too. Okay. All right. So, um, so maybe we'll start to get to a subcommittee meeting together, hopefully within the next week or two, just to kind of get some ideas going. Um, we're still aiming for some time in the spring, so possibly around April, April time frame, if or May time frame, if possible. Probably not too close to Pride event, which I think we're planning for early June. Um, but at least this way we can see, you know, whether or not this is something we're going to be able to pull off for the spring or, um, or if we need to push that back further, depending upon availability and interest in, in making this kind of a collaborative event with, with, other, um, with other interested parties throughout town. I think that sounds good. Um, we can look at the time frame and then also even if there's an abbreviated like, you know what I mean? Kind of a segue, something that we do in the interim. Um, so there's not a big gap in between. So we could take a look at that. All right. Any other questions on that? Or can I answer any? If you want to delegate anything else, let me know. Anyone else from the committee interested in being part of the subcommittee with Cheryl on this one? I see Liz is saying no, Amy. I'd be, I'd be glad to call, but the next item on the agenda is Pride, which, which I'll be working on, like I've already started thinking about, so I'm not sure if I'll be the most helpful or have a lot of capacity, but um, if you need people and 
a sounding board and ideas, I can definitely go to the meetings. Thank you. Okay, and Cheryl, please feel free to include me as well. Oh, I will. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All right, um, Pride event, Amy, talk to us. Yeah, not not a lot of, I mean, obviously I haven't done any a lot yet, but um, I did confirm the date will be June 11th. Um, I'm excited because that date is good for the NRT. It doesn't conflict with anything else going around, going on in town, and it doesn't conflict with Providence Pride either. Um, it is a Sunday. Hopefully that that works for everyone. Um, I'm meeting with Jen Cummings from the NRT on the 25th this month at noon. If anyone wants to um, show go or show up um, just to get things started, um, I think my goals for January are reaching out to um, Mary Southwick of Southworth. Hopefully she's still the right contact at the town, but I'll probably draft um, like the sponsor letter, the vendor letter, all that stuff that took so long last time. I'm just going to update the dates and hopefully have those ready to go a lot sooner this year. Um, I Once that's done, I can reach out to, um, you know, I might even just ask someone to send it through the Chamber of Commerce to see if um, anyone wants to donate. Um, the, I had a couple of questions like logistics that I hope we can talk about as a group. One is um, charging for booths this year. I know we've talked about it in the past um, and I need, a, I need a gut check because I'm in inclined to let people who, if, if anyone who helped out last year, I like, I really want them to like not have to pay. <laughs> um, but then maybe anyone new pays because I don't know, last year was so, I feel like people went above and beyond. And um, I think a lot of people did it because it was free and it would be great to have them involved again. I don't want to like exclude anyone if they can't pay. And so I'm wondering thoughts and then I'm wondering what we would actually charge for a booth. What, what feels realistic? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm wondering, do we need to charge for booths or um, is there a difference if we're, because I know we talked about charging for food vendors, right? Because, um, the, you know, that seems like something that is like a standard where people are, are had kind of almost expected to tr be charged for something like that for participation. Um, but some of the booths that we that we had there, like the school and some of these other um, groups that were represented, I, I'm not necessarily sure we would we would charge those then. Okay, great. No, I'm I'm fine with that. And I didn't know that I didn't know there was a differentiation. I didn't know that the food vendors had expected to pay something. So um, it feels like they're making a lot more money. So right, uh, that that feels fine. Jen, I know the NRT when they do the harvest fair, different ball game, different number of you know attendees. But I know that anyone who's selling anything, they charge a fee. I think that's also standard. I see. I think it's standard. I guess my question would be why? Because if we're if we're not using it as a fundraising issue, right? And if we just have the same space as we did last year, we might not have enough space. And you know, to bring in people, that could be the difference, even if it's, you know, if it's $25. Okay, so what's that bringing in versus, okay, now we're going to charge $100. Does that, is it? Yeah, that would be a difference of like 300 versus $1,200, you know? Right. So it's like, I guess at the end of the day, do we need the money? Liz, I see that your treasurer update is D. Um, and you know, kind of going from there. So, and then the other thing, just, and Karen, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Kristen had asked that pretty much everything that is being sent to the town just be sent to her, and she can use, she can kind of serve as the, the kind of conduit to all the other agencies within the town. Okay, That's Kristen, right. yeah. 
Um, she offered that for us, considering uh, maybe a, our previous project where she felt like maybe we had to go through a few hoops. She was trying to streamline that by serving as a primary point of contact for us. Kristen who? Um, Kristen Kennedy. Kennedy. Kristen Kennedy. Craig, as a Amy, town group, are we allowed to charge money? I don't see any reason why you can't. As much as we're allowed to sell t-shirts, right? Yeah, I don't think there's any reason you can't. Um, but the question, I mean, it, it, it's not a fundraising event, but it is a way to raise some funds for the for the HRC. Um, but I can't imagine that you want to hit somebody up for, you know, 20, you know, more than 25 bucks or something like that for a okay. booth. That's great. No, I thought we would talk, had talked about charging booths and, um, I feel better after having this conversation. So the other question I have is how big do we want to grow this? And this is a question for Jen Cummings too. I feel like with the amount of time we have, we could probably like double the size if we wanted to. Do we want to, do we want to, you know, bring other people in as partners to help out? Like what are everyone's thoughts and feelings? I think anything much bigger than what we did last year is going to, is we, we really just don't have the resources to manage unless other people want to jump in and, and spend more time on it. But um, on, on the other hand, if people are excited to grow it, I'm all in like, I think it was pretty freaking awesome. So, um, so how many external groups did you have last year, Amy? I think we ended up with probably around fifteen or sixteen vendors slash food vendors, and then um, I mean I say we partnered with, but I mean Queer Youth Assemble, um, the NRT, like we did ninety five percent of the work, right? Um, except the day of the NRT was incredibly helpful, but, um, and then we had some people, I think, send emails for us. So probably RMK, probably the YMCA. Um, so when you, when you say growing your, you're talking about your partners, not necessarily. I'm talking all about all of it. The, do we want to bring other people in to help? Do we want to bring in more vendors than 12 to 15? Um, so grow space wise and numbers wise, do we want to bring in people to help run it as partners? Because like, like anything, much, like I'm saying, anything much bigger would require more help. Um, that to me seems like the place to start. Like does someone or a person or group come to mind as ready, willing and able to step up to essentially co run and plan this? Um. But even before then, do we even have the space, right? Because if, if we are in the exact same space, then we are the exact same kind of footprint that we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, that's what the 25th should hopefully be about with Jen, like one of the questions we talked through. So I just wanted to get a feel from this group too, before I go talk to her, we can see what she says and maybe the group after that, but. Yeah, and I think that's an important thing you know, to find out what what the limitations are in terms of space, because okay. if there's more space, then it might make sense to try to get more partners. Okay. Um, the last question I had is, um, I wonder if we can get ECAT to do like an ad for us leading up. Is that a silly idea? I know they've done um ads for events around town and i also know that they have some footage from last year's event so i wonder if they'd be willing to do something that would be pretty cool absolutely absolutely and i would reach out you know, go ahead and reach out to them does anyone have a name there i'm trying to remember the name of the new person in charge i, I just can't think of it okay you can certainly um you can add uh, kristen will know kristen um, kenny I, I think there's um i can email you tomorrow i think there's a gal named kelly there okay and somebody else named jason okay. i have their i have their emails so i can send jason, you those tomorrow awesome and that the, the jason i know left so oh all right i didn't know that but i know there's a kelly 
Um, I can find out um, sure. tomorrow because they can awesome. call Frothingham. So I'll let you know. Okay, super. Thank you. Um, I have a question. I, I love the idea of the, um, the commercial kind of piece, advertising. I wonder if they would be willing to do an interview with you to talk about the why um, to generate interest too. That might be part of like, um, the, you know, just like a, a 10 minute interview. Why are we? In they, a, um, yeah, I would do, I would be willing to do whatever. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Cause they'd be post that, like there's like the different Eastern pages and then, you know, that it would like run through, you know, their, the, the local channel too, but we can all blast that as well. Um, not just a, not just like an advertisement, but like literally speaking, why are we doing this? And I yeah. think that people would really connect to a live person like yourself and talking about like, you know, what, what are we here for? And it also, um, I, I think that would resonate with people. They, they have quite a bit of footage from last year too. They interviewed a bunch of us and they have a lot of, like that's kind of, a lot of us answered like why we were doing it, so. The sound bites, yeah. I bet even if it's just like a, I'm just thinking what what's appealing that one on one that one person that you know if not in making you a face but like I'm happy to talk you know I just feel like um you, you know something recent yes like here we are welcome to 2023 and I don't know we could talk about it yeah totally. Priscilla, Priscilla Olson has a show where she interviews people in the town so that's a person to reach out to yep um, to see if if she would want to interview a member or members of the committee regards to the pride event. I'm just throwing this out there. I am so bad at that kind of stuff. I am willing to do all the work and all the planning. If anyone wants to be the face. Cheryl's good yeah. at that stuff. Those you know best. what? I actually, uh, <laughs> I owe ECAT a follow-up. I think Kathy and I had talked about connecting with them in the beginning of the year to maybe do something around the HRC. So why don't I take that as an action item to follow up with them and see if they would even edit the footage from last year and help us put together a promo and um, it, within the promo, see if we have interviews that we can incorporate as well. Because I, I, I kind of recall Kathy and I um, mentioning that that was something that we wanted to do circle back with ECAT early this awesome. year and just around HRC stuff anyway. So I'll take that as an action item. Awesome. And then for, um, for Kristen Kennedy, I'll, I'll send an email to her, just letting her know that we're going to kick off our pride event planning and introduce her to you. And, okay. um, and then this way, you know, we'll at least, uh, we'll kick that off with, um, with, you know, just reminding her that, you know, that was at least our interpretation was that she was going to be our primary point of contact with the town and, um, and that uh, we're ready to planning on that. Yeah. Just as a side note, Mary Southworth was incredible to work with. Yeah. Yes. And she is a wealth of, I just want to make sure she gets a, a shout out or credit in it because she is, she went through the whole process with me with the intent of doing it again this year. And it was something that she hadn't done before, or probably nobody in the town currently had done before. So um, I think she really, I think she looked at it as defining the process as she went to. So um, we should tell Kristen that, um, like she's got all the info, you know? Yeah, definitely. I remember that impression. That was, yeah. that was definitely positive. We went through quite the runaround before we got to her. I remember that. Yeah, she helped figure things out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think what's helpful too, the social media presence has been a lot bigger through the town. So having Kristen, cause I think the person who, um, handles it works for Kristen so making sure that all of that is pushed out through the town site as well Ooh, I also okay. recall um Kristen had mentioned maybe having Jeff the program coordinator like be part of our subcommittee potentially as we start to plan so that this way they could also um they had some you know additional insight about waiving <laughs> certain fees or I don't know, other types of ideas that they had for us as well as we started to plan this. So I'll also inquire about that as well. Great. Who on our committee this year is going to be our subcommittee? 
happy to join again. I, I have it. I think that I can beat my total of food vendors for last year. <laughs> I have the utmost confidence in you, Beth, that you will get one. I don't. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, did you raise your hand? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, did we have a date yet for this? June 11th. Thank you. Sure. So I'm happy to subcommittee you if you're a little bit subcommittee me. You got it. <laughs> a little bit subcommittee, just a little. <laughs> and Amy, me too. Okay. I thought you guys would be a lot more excited about a mural, but that's okay. <laughs> I am, especially since there was more graffiti at OA recently. Oh, there was? Mm -hmm. So I wonder if, um, if and maybe Beth, this is what you and I had been kind of um, informally chatting about, which is could could the projects be tied together in some way? Yes. Could there be like leading up to the Pride event is this you know art project and that you know gain momentum through the town and interest and um, and like the, tie it together. Yeah. I thought that's kind of what it was. Like this was a segue or a lead up, and then maybe that's a day that say like on June eleventh is is the unveiling of whatever it is that we've created. And even if we don't create something huge, it's still a creation, right? And then I don't know. I just I feel I felt like that would be like an unveiling, but maybe I'm. But I know it's in two separate places. So, so I, I think what, what I'm super excited about this year is we know what we're doing more. We have a lot of resources already that we've either collected or created from last year. And I'm excited to reach out to places like the Y and the library a lot earlier, months earlier than we did last year. And maybe they want to add to the programming. Maybe they want to do their own events. Maybe the library wants to organize some kind of town book or whatever, you know. Um, I don't know, just I think there's opportunity for planning and momentum. And Well, if we, obviously it's Pride Month. So it's yeah. when we're spinning that, it's all these different organizations. How are they, how are you showing, showing your pride? Yeah. You know, are there are different things that you can host. Totally. It's part of it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry. So back to the, um, the vandalism at the high school, there was an incident at the high school um, that was brought to our attention um, both through the superintendent as well as um, police chief Boone, he reached out as well, shared with um, shared with me and with Beth the incident that occurred, which was there was some vandalism in a bathroom at Oliver Ames, and um, actually through investigation and interviews, the um, the culprit was found and um, and has been uh, addressed. So. So that's how that um, that kind of played out. I don't know, Beth, if there was any other details that you think are worth sharing at this point. No, I think um, Kelly actually called me that day when it happened, even before the email went out to let us know. So I thought that that was a positive step as far as collaboration. We also talked about, um, and obviously I'm just letting the new year die down as well as the traffic, but um, just trying to collaborate not as a town and some sort of what does that look like right there has been vandalism at the high school there's been issues you know in the town or throughout the town is there the possibility of a discussion some sort of restorative circle where we can talk about the folks who have been harmed and what are we doing as a community to kind of make it whole um so she and i had preliminary conversations the day of and even after um, and I said, all right, let's just circle back after the new year to, to talk about it. But there definitely seems to be some interest, you know, obviously invite members from the high school, invite folks from the town who have been impacted. Um, you know, we have our share it might be even helpful to have a whole list of the things that have, have occurred over the past, not just year, maybe the past couple of years. Would be and it would be helpful i think i mean there's obviously been swastikas it'd be helpful for folks from the jewish community to speak about the harm that it caused them and mm -hmm. you know regardless it'd be helpful for folks from 
you know, LGBTQ community to talk about what it means when you have anti or some sort of hate directed at your group. If we have the, you know, the Stormfront folks, what is it like to exist um, from any other marginalized community that's being targeted? So it might just be helpful. And Ben, you said that was with um, Kelly, right? That you had that conversation with, I'm sorry, or did you say it was with Leisha? No, it was with Kelly because she was the main contact. And then it was like, all right, well, let's talk more about this after the new year. I would assume, obviously, Leisha would get involved. I would assume that, you know, we'd probably want additional people. It's not just a high school issue. I, I'm going to go out on a limb that there's things that are happening at the K through 12 lower levels as well. Beth, what do you think that forum looks like and who leads it? I think it could look like a couple different things. So if we did a true restorative type of circle, right, we'd want to reach out, probably advertise, talk to the different targeted groups. I know a few facilitators who could do it, right? So you could either have, you know, there's kind of like a stand-in who you could, you know, express and, and say, this is what's happening, um, a true restorative circle would use a talking stick, would talk about, you know, the things, the incidences, how it impacted people as a individual, as a community, and then kind of work together as to where do we move from here, right? And my conversations with Kelly, I, I'm assuming that the person who is responsible for the graffiti, it does sound like there's been some of that learning that, or at least those moments that have happened as well. So I think it's wouldn't we want that? You know, my my fear is, and maybe it's a it's also an opportunity for the community to learn, right? I think the last time we spoke, I mentioned that there was a new state law. Before you can suspend or expel somebody, you have to show some sort of restorative type issue, um, as opposed to just knee jerk suspension and expulsion. And I think sometimes what happens, especially as you know, parents or teachers or whomever. We want to know what happened to the person, right? We, our, you know, quest for justice is always, well, they should be suspended or they should be expelled. And we know that that's not actually what makes the biggest change. Um, so maybe it's a lesson for the town folks as well as to why approaches such as this actually have better learning outcomes than just arresting people or suspending people type of thing. So I think we could hit on a bunch of different learning outcomes with this approach. So that sounds like it would be school-led, PTS-led. I don't think it necessarily has to be them. I think we could do it in collaboration with them, right? Because the incidences happen in and outside of the schools. And I yeah, think I, I'm guessing is there like I, I think it's I'm all in like I think it's so important like what's what are the action items how do we help make it happen? Yeah, I'll circle back with Kelly. Like I said, I, a good friend of mine is a facilitator. She actually um, she's worked for she has a, a grant through the Department of Justice in which she actually facilitates things that happen within towns. Um, I'm sure that there's people from the ADL who do it as well. Um, so it's just you know, kind of reaching out, getting the agreement that, yeah, we want to move forward with that and then putting the steps into action. So I'll reach out to Kelly probably next week. I wanted the kind of new year and new school to settle um, and, and just kind of touch base with her after that. And I'm sure Alicia will obviously get involved. It's not just the high school issue. Yeah, and Beth, I'm wondering if um, if this might be something that we can sponsor. You know, as the HRC, if that's something that, you know, we think, especially if you already have a contact and, you know, we can leverage our um, our partners here as well, to help us with um, with getting the word out there. But and even work with um, with Kelly and um, and Dr. Cabral for a space if we needed to if we wanted to have it in person, um, an in-person event. But that that sounds like something that we could definitely put on our radar. Yeah, I think a, an in-person event would be fantastic. Selfishly, I'd love to do it at the new school. Um, so I show that off too. But let me reach out to, to people because I, I don't think it matters that it's not, it's not settled, but that it's passed. I think we could just say there have been a series of incidents that have happened in this town, right? And we, we're just saying 
it, it's a lot more difficult to write something on a bathroom wall if you have the person, if there's somebody there who you know is going to be harmed because of it. And that, I think that there's just an opportunity for all of us to learn. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Um, maybe this kind of segues to our next conversation, which is around partner collaboration. And so here I have um, the HRC Coalition, RMK, and the Superintendent Committee, but maybe just based on this conversation, we can start off with the Superintendent Committee, Beth. Anything in particular in terms of topics, maybe outside of this one, um, that the that, that group is focused on this, this month? I think for the most part, what we've been doing is uh, just kind of re-establishing. And actually, I'm, I'll turn it over to Michelle because I missed yesterday. I was actually stuck in Boston, so she can give a heads up of what we went over. Yesterday was more of just <clears throat> an update on the Blanche James opening, um, pick up, drop off, um, how they've been problem solving with that, traffic, and um, just reminding people that it's still a construction zone. Um, Parkview still needs to be um, taken down. The whole front area needs to still be put in. And so there are a lot of temporary um, issues, temporary pickup, temporary timing, temporary traffic jams that, um, that are just unique to this year while we finish out the construction phase. Um, Cause I know that that's been a little bit of a, um, a frustration for parents, which is understandable, but just to, to take a minute to understand that that's just from now until June while we're finishing up the project. Um, and then the only other thing Beth that we worked on, <clears throat> if you remember, we had those little groups and I wasn't there when those were started where we talked about um, I cited on the R, um, RMK one yesterday. I don't know which one you were working on. Um, and I'm gonna have to defer to you on that. It started, I think the end of last year where they had those little subgroups and you talked about things that you wanted to work on and then come back and share with the bigger group. She had us at the very end, just kind of reconnect. Although there was not a lot of people at the meeting. Um, so I'm not sure where that was headed though, long-term. I think our, my subgroup group, I did it with Anne and we were just talking about, um, you know, the stop preaching to the choir type of thing, which even goes back to the last one. It's we're we're constantly using the same group of students. We're constantly going back to that same well. Um, the message can get diluted if it's only coming from, quote, leaders and, and how do we actually put and give more voice to the students and empower them to actually kind of take the ball and run with it. And that was literally like the last three minutes. She just kind of brought it up. We ran short on time. You know, I, I wanted to pick up on something you said, Michelle, about the, the, the some of the parents having a difficult time in re regards to the, uh, the traffic flow and things like that. Um, I would I would imagine that if you ask their children, they are absolutely thrilled to be in this incredible new school. I mean, one of my colleagues has a, has a second grader, mm -hmm. and when he asked her the other day about the new school, she said, amazing. Um, and she said it twice. Um, and it is amazing. I've been through it. Um, I had the privilege of, of getting a, a tour through that before it opened. Um, and it is amazing. Uh, there is no two ways about it. Uh, I met two teachers who were setting up their classrooms. Um, in the It was in the evening. And um, one of them was an art teacher. One of them was a pre- a pre-K uh, teacher, and they were just ecstatic with the school, the setup, the the opportunities. So I would my response my response to, to parents was, or is, ask your children how they feel about this new school, um, and, right. and I think that really should be the focus. Um, is the, the that this the, a great principal uh, and a and a great staff and a a beautiful facility that. Um, 
people are moving into town because they because they want their kids to go to that school. So I think that should be the focus. Sorry about on my soap. Oh, absolutely, but, um, and you're right. Okay. The kids are, are loving it, loving it. And to that point, there will be a public um, tour per se, but they it as much as people want to do that now, they would like to wait until Parkview is gone and the whole front area is the play area, the, the fields and everything is in so that when we bring the public in, they see the whole picture complete. So that is coming. I know that people are itching to see it because it is a, it's a beautiful school, but it is coming, so. On but time just, and under budget, which is extraordinary. Yeah. Well, it is definitely yeah. exciting. Definitely exciting for the town. So I can I can understand the the interest in it for sure. There are plenty um, of parents who are not complaining and who are uh, thrilled about it, even though we're, the the traffic affects everyone. But it is such a great opportunity, and I love um, your positive spin on it, Craig. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, all right. So that's superintendent. I just want to move us along for the next topic was around the HRC coalition. And um, there is a meeting this Friday. I did circulate it because I won't be able to attend, but they're having a guest speaker from the ADL. Um, Callum Farley is going to be, um, he's from the, uh, Callum is from the Center of Extremism and will be joining the meeting to discuss um, neo-Nazi extremism with a particular focus on accelerationist movement and um and there will be focus around law enforcement and collaboration with community organizations so i am actually not able to attend but was hoping um, other folks had availability so that we would at least hear the presentation and have some representation at this meeting it's at 9 a.m on friday so if um, anybody has availability Please let me know. I think Beth, you mentioned you might, but maybe limited. I'm, I'm trying to move something, a meeting that I don't want to go to. So this is um, a complete <laughs> perfect excuse to. <laughs> okay, awesome. And if anybody else is interested, you're more than welcome. Yeah, to I, I might be interested too, Karen. It's a, it's a Zoom. Is it Zoom or is it in person? It, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, it's Zoom. Okay. I'll forward you the info. Craig, if you don't already okay. have. Yeah. Um, okay. And then any updates on RMK events that folks are aware of? Maybe not with Kathy out. I think Kathy's kind of our RMK liaison there. Um, we can follow up with her separately. Okay, anything else from a partner collaboration standpoint? Uh, treasure update, Liz, anything to share with so, the group? Yep, so nothing has changed since last month. Our balance is still that $950 in change. Um, I do have $40 in t-shirt sales from our December events. Um, I think that was from the holiday pop-up shop um, still to deposit. So that will, will put us just under $1,000. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other action items from the group? I have two questions or requests. Um, so one is a follow-up on the religious holiday observance calendar. And we had talked at a prior meeting about possibly collaborating with other HRCs. So we have, so as not to duplicate effort, um, both on content and dates and format and stuff. So I think Karen, you had mentioned maybe that it had come up in a prior meeting. I don't know if it was Hingham, Needham. Hingham, yep. Um, um, so I don't know if you have a name of a contact there, uh, and I I would be willing to follow up, or if you want to reach out first and CC me, that's fine. But that's also a task that we should um, get on because Michelle, what's the calendar planning? It's this month, isn't it? I don't know if it's going to make, usually it starts around February. Okay. Well, that would be better on our end if you know, we had like a, a draft to get together for February. So 
Excellent. Okay, I'll get you the name of the HRC uh, contact and hang on this. Okay. Um, and the other thing is updating the website. I know we go back and forth on this a while. Amy, remind me, the town has the capacity to update it or does not? The town can, and I actually have like 75% of the way done some instruction okay. for how to log in and um, make edits. It's yeah, so that, um, that seems like a discrete task that we should probably give to someone just like Kathy does ally list. Um, it would be good to have someone always on website who isn't also running pride and many other events to reduce Amy's load a little bit. And we had also talked about um, having a high school member possibly or like liaison. And, you know, if you have someone who's tech savvy of any age, that might be a nice discreet way to help out the committee. Um, I don't know, you know, I know there are access concerns with that. I think one of the one of the challenge challenges is that when we say like, oh, can you can you add this event or whatever, it's not just making, it's not just going in and making the edits. It's like writing the content and making sure it's appropriate and formatted and correct and you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like if we could make it a regular line item on the agenda, and if 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 the whole committee could help out more with put this exact thing on there, it would be a lot easier for a person to manage. Like if we come up with a high school student, it's very likely that we're going to have to be a little bit more prescriptive. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so just throwing that out there, like. I like that idea of it being a standing item. I mean, truthfully, like for every event we do, the last item on all of that should be and write up a summary and send it to Amy or whomever the web uploader person is. Um, but failing that every month, like a quick recap of what we did last month and was a summary sent to Amy might be another way to just keep the system better and not have you have the burden of creating content as well as uploading it. Cause I understand what you mean about like, that's, that's a lot. I'm open to whatever. Could anyway. we do that going forward, Karen, just um, on our next month, like ha have that as a line item, just like treasure update. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. And then if people have a list of, I know it's been neglected for several months. So if we want to go and like retroactively fix or add or edit, um, please let me know. Um, I think well, I, we should follow the rule um, that I'd read about many years ago about organizing pictures is start with the present. Because if you start where you left off, you're always going to be behind. Whereas if you start at the present, you'll feel cat caught up and you can like narrow the gap as as you get there. I like that. I like that. I love that. Well, that um, actually segues nicely maybe to my action item that I wanted to bring forward, which was we have some member updates. So both Jean and Sergio have stepped down from the committee. So we have two openings at this point. So maybe back to what Liz was stating last time, we talked about potentially um, opening it up to see if there's any interest at the high school, because that was something that was brought up at the HRC coalition meeting, um, that they have a high school, uh, some of the, some of the um, other HRCs have a high school representation. Some of them have um, representation from um, the fire department. Um, other folks mentioned the, we talked about kind of the letters to um, our, our aging population in our community to see if there's any interest there. Um, so I, I think that if you have folks that are interested, please tell them to apply. Um, and we're looking for people who can roll up their sleeves and help lead events and want to participate in events and, um, and have interest in this work and a passion for this work. So I think that's really important. Um, and, you know, even as we evaluate applicants for the, 
for the for the open positions, that's what we will be looking for. Um, you know, it's great to have a great resume and lots of background in this workspace, and we absolutely appreciate that. But at the end of the day, you know, we're a committee that um, wants to get things done, and uh, and we need people who are, have interest in in helping to support that. So, um, so I, you know, open up, open that up. Hopefully, uh, we have some folks in town that are interested and um, and ready to help support this awesome committee. Because you know, like Amy said earlier, you know, we've learned a lot oh, just from all these different events and our participation over the years. And um, and you know, in order for us to do the projects that we really want to get done and the events that we want to hold, um, we need we need some some energy and some interest and some passion in this works. So awesome. Okay. Anything else for um, open action items? Okay. Let me just quickly check and see if we have any public participation and we do not. So I think we're good there. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Before just one one second before I just want to let people know that I did pull papers, um, nomination papers to be to run for re-election uh, on April twenty second of this year. So it's not an, it's not an action item for you guys, but I just wanted people to know if I show up at your door, knock on my door on your door, <laughs> you'll know why I'm there. So um, as did I, and I've already been knocking on your doors. <laughs> Saturday, are you are you meeting up? Do you need signers? Did you say the fourteenth sometime somewhere? Yeah, 10, 10 to twelve at the at Dunkin' Donuts up at um, across from Hilliards. Okay. okay. Also, we're going to be out. I'm sure that all of us, like Michelle and myself, go out and knock on doors anyways to get people to sign. So, so don't be surprised if you see me come up your driveway. So, <laughs> doors open. <laughs> Sounds good, Craig and Michelle. It sounds lucky to have you both. Um, Thank you. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Barger. Second. Move to vote. Barger, yes. Bornstein, yes. Chan, yes. Devonshire, yes. Gershman, yes. A, yes. Grants, yes. Larry, yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Hope everybody has a great night. Good to see everybody. Thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye. Take care.